Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is Praveen here. I hope you guys are doing good. So as part of your free DevOps and SRE Bootcamp 6, today we are going to learn Golang. And this video will be very, very special because you should be knowing how a Golang programming language works and what are the syntaxes that you need to follow and what are the commands that you are supposed to get to understand any kind of project. So today will be the basics project, which we will be doing using the use case one, two, three, four, five, whatever the use case are there in the GitHub repository. I'll be showing you, I'll be doing a little bit of hands-on also. And in the part two, you will be getting the complete CI CD pipeline with the Go language, right? So I've divided as basics and advanced. So stay tuned. If you complete this video, then only you will be eligible for the advanced video because once you know the basics, how you do the coding, what are the steps that you need to follow, then you will be understanding the part two. So what are you waiting for before starting the video? Give a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel and make sure you join the Telegram group for all the projects that we have covered as part of the Bootcamp 6. So let's get started, guys. I'll share my screen. First of all, let's discuss about like what is Go language? What are the things that you need to learn in the Go language? So as you are aware that most of the Kubernetes components and most of the programming language, which is related to your Kubernetes is written in the Go language, right? And few of the companies are expecting you to know the Go language so that you are a competent programmer. Even though the Python stands in the first place and then the Golang takes the second. But in 2024, knowing at least the syntax, what is the coding part, how to build the code using the Golang, everything is very much important. So I have given here Golang part one, so you can see here, right? And, and I'm telling like, we will learn with code base. So everything, whatever I'm going to show you in today's uh, document, it will be based on the scenarios, right? So with the help of scenarios, you will be able to understand that it's so nice simple go lang. Achha, okay, at least DevOps and SRE, ke liye, cheeze chahiye, toh, let's get started guys, okay? So first of all, before going into the code base, I would like to tell you all, as you all have heard about Maven and you all know that what are the commands that is Maven doing, right? Maven clean, Maven install, Maven build, right? Maven test and all those commands are similarly built here for the go commands also. So if you see go and a command and then the argument, what is the file name we have to pass and you see here go has a build, clean, doc, environment fix, FMT, get, install, list, run, test. So basically we use like go build file name, go clean, some data, go doc, go environment, go fix, go FMT, go get, go install file name. So basically what happens here is go list, go install. So what happens here is we will be using specific set of commands here, go build, go install and go run. So these three commands are very much important. Go run, you can see here, compile and run the Go program. So that is what we'll be doing today. And go build, compile packages and dependencies like Maven build, Maven run itself. And go test, test packages if you have any kind of test packages. FMT is one of the important command which I'll be showing you in the code. And then we will slowly understand the importance of the Go language. So let's get started guys. So first of all, you have seen all those things, right? So let's start, like how do you understand the Go language? So if you are well versed with Python, if you know a little bit of Python coding, this is similar to your Python. Okay. So let me show you first, let's understand with the variables, how the variable declaration is done, how our Go code is written. So as you can see here, I have given my GitHub link. So you don't need to do anything. You just see the video here. That's it. And later you can do the hands-on. That should not be an issue. So this is very, very much simple use case of Go language where we are trying to do some addition of numbers or just printing of the numbers. So let's see, like, how do you define or decide uh, writing a Go language? So I will, I'll show you like how each variable is important in the Python. If you have seen, we were using import statements. Now I'm not sure how many of you are using Python, but yeah, in Python, we have the import statement. So similarly, one of the important thing here stands is the import statement. So if you see here, we are importing the FMT and these all things remains constant. The first three things remains constant for every code which you write in the Go language. These three things have to be, must and should, should have to be there in order to write and execute your Go language program. So first of all, we will say like package. So this package main is one of the important factor which will make sure that you have your function defined. So if you see here, package main is called first and we are importing the FMT. Now FMT is a module in Go, which will help you to uh, format. So basically FMT is kind of a format strings, 
format variables, format data types, and also it is used for printing any kind of output in the code. So these all things the FMT does. Now, if you see here in the coding structure, F-U-N-C, in the same way, if you see, I'm just comparing with the Python because it will become simple, D-E-F function name. If you remember this, right? If you remember, just comment in the comment section. Now, F-U-N-C function main, right? This is what the important thing is. And it is also constant. If you see the curly braces start, right? And if you see, how do you define a variable in Go language? If you see uh, like variable, okay, number, okay, here the difference between the uh, Python and the Go languages, you have to say like uh, what type of uh, data type you are using. So it is integer, float or whatever it is. And if you see, there are other patterns also. If you don't write int also, that is fine. So you see where number int equal to 10. So what we are trying to tell here is explicitly we are telling that it is an integer value. Here, we are not telling anything. Assign a value without declaring the data type, right? So that is what I am telling. And other type of defining a variable is, guys, you should be remembering all those things, whatever I am telling, because the part two is based on this coding standards. And even the case three, case four will depend on these standards, whatever we are using, right? So function main, if you have seen like variable one, we are defining the data type, variable two, the number two, there is no data type. Even though there is no data type, it will defaultly take on the background, the integer value itself. Now, if you see, there is a shorthand notation to define a variable where we say in the Golang like number, right? This, this is what we use. This is called like assigning a value to a variable. So whenever you see something like this in the, in the case, two, three, four, you should be able to understand that, okay, boss, this is something like a variable, a value which is defined to a variable. Now I will be executing this code in a little bit of time, but I hope you have understood like very simple guys in your brain, you should be understanding like package main, you should have import FMT statement if you should have and function main, you should start with the block and import uh, statements, whatever you have used and then variables definition because every code starts with these primary basic steps. So I thought like, okay, let me explain you this first. We will do the hands-on also. Let's go to the case two. Now you will see like, Praveen, yaar, isme to kuch hai nahi. Kya hai yaar, go language mein kuch hai nahi. But, but trust me guys, so these are just basics which we are building now in the part two of video which i'll be releasing in the coming week you should be able to understand like oh, okay this is what the use case of go language is that's where Praveen was telling this is basics and then the advanced things are there so let's get into the case two where we will understand about the operator so same way in the python also you have operators plus minus division uh multiplication and all those things so similarly in the go language also you have uh, the operator. So let's go and see like what kind of operators you have. So first of all, under the operators folder, I have kept like data flow dot go, right? As, as uh, you are seeing here again, the first three blocks, uh, first three statements remain same and we are assigning a value to a variable num1, num2. And again, there are some things like sum, right? Uh, num1 plus num2. And as I've told you, FMT is basically the formatting of, of the variables of the string of the data types. But here, if you see FMT dot print F, so this is called something like your printing of the variables, right? So we are using FMT to print the variables or print any kind of data. So if you see here, what exactly we are doing is we are printing the values of the data. Okay. So some num1 plus num2. So what is the value uh, that we are going to print, right? So what is the value that we are going to get is also the output here. Now, if you see here difference num1 minus num2, right? So uh, this is also something like num1 minus num2 equal to difference. So FMT, FMT print F when I tell you, it will show you the difference of those two and it will print like uh, this value minus this value equal to this uh, output and num1, num2 and the difference. So what we are trying to do, it will show you. And if you see in the third type multiplication, num1 into num2, like one value into two value, right? And uh, basically uh, here, uh, we are trying to say like multiplication of the values, right? And we are trying to say like product, okay? Difference sum. These are like print statements only. Like you you tell sometimes, right? I will tell you, I will tell you, don't worry. So you, you tell like this, okay? Print F, okay? Sum of two numbers, right? Where? In the Python, I am telling. So basically, this is the same statement which you have to make sure you understand. Okay, so let's move forward. Let's understand like other use cases which we have. Case three, understanding the data types, very, very important because 
the data types are the heart of the DevOps and SRE engineers because we deal with Python, we deal with Shell, we deal with your Go programming language where we understand like, okay, these are some things which you have to make sure you get the data. Now, under this data types, we have flow data type, integer data type and string data type. So let's see one by one. So again, package main FMT import function. Now here variable. Now if you see where salary one is float 32 where salary two is float now as i have told you the declaration of the variables are done with the help of defining the data types also so because we are using flow dot float dot go so here dot go is the extension of the file which we should be remembering and we should be making sure that okay boss this is what we need to understand now here you see salary one and salary two so you need to make sure that these are some float types and we are just printing the salary and we are not doing anything here. Okay. So let's move forward. Let's understand like integer dot go again, where integer one, where integer two, integer one, integer two, and we are printing. So that's it. So in any type of code, you should be able to understand that this coding standards remain same package import. Like this is very simple imports, but if I will show you in the errors, uh, the error types, error declaration, the import statement will be a little bit big where we'll be using some more import statements to make you understand. Okay. So let's go to the error uh, case four where we are doing the error handling. So let's go inside this error handling and we will be making sure that what we are trying to do here also package main is there import. If you see errors now here, one more important thing is because we are using the error module in our code, how to define an error you would have seen in the Java code. If you have done try catch in the Python, try catch is there. Similarly, there is like the error handling in this particular type of code, which is very, very much important. Now let's see like, when you're doing import errors and FMT. So let's see like function main message equal to hello. Now what we are trying to do is my error equal to errors dot new. Okay. So whenever we are using new. So again, uh, let me tell you. So it's kind of a new object. Okay. New whenever we say a new in any kind of data uh, programming language. So what we do is new is something like new object. Okay. New is what new dress, new pen, new clothes. What is that new something new is coming onto the code. So what we are trying to do is errors dot new. So what we are trying to do in the error message, we are trying to send wrong message. Okay. Now here you need to understand if else condition also, if else conditions also remain same as kind of your shell scripting, as kind of your Python coding, as kind of your uh, Java coding, as well as your go also remains same. If message is not equal to program program is right then fft dot print ln is my error but if you see here the message is hello so what it will try to print out let's see here okay so let's see what are the things that you have learned till today now once you have uh, understood some kind of code here so what you have to do you have to install the visual studio so as i always tell visual studio is one of the important uh, uh what you call like uh, important block you need to make sure you understand uh, Visual Studio because it is like the IDE integrated development environment where you do there do here your coding okay so let's see like first of all the error error.go module so if you see here in the error.go before this you have to go to your uh, help module you have to search here extensions okay under this extensions you have to search for go and you have to install the rich go language plugin here okay so this is very very much important so once you do this no need to worry you have to come here and this is what we have seen here right so let's open the terminal new terminal and i'll be just uh, showing you some parameters here how to run a file how to run a go file is basically go uh, run okay go run right and the file name okay whether i am inside the folder or not cd error handling i have to go and i will run like go run okay same like maven run okay maven clean maven test so similar like that error dot go okay so let's see like what what output it will give wrong message right so why it has given wrong message because if you see here if message is not equal to right if message is not equal to program this correct right message is not equal to right if i tell here message is equal to right what will happen what will happen it will simply say like what it will say it will not do anything okay if message is equal to program this there is nothing right so what i will do i will just say here if message is equal to program this let's see here what it will do okay now what it is telling if message is equal to program is right then fmt print my error but still it is going into the wrong message it is printing wrong message uh why it is printing wrong message let's see if message is equal to program is okay. Mm. Anything I have changed, guys? Uh, let's see. Errors dot new. Create error using new function. Okay.
Okay, let's see. Oh, okay, okay. It should print this only, now, guys. Yeah, what you are doing? Okay, so let's see. Like my error is what? My error is this value only, now. It should print this message only, right? So if I say like not equal to, right? What it has to do? It has to. Okay, it has to not print anything because nothing is there. Now, if I type here else, okay, then it will come into the else block and it will do the wonders here. Okay, so that is what. Uh, the definition of the code looks like and don't worry like we will be doing so much things in the part two this is just like the simple basic uh, which I wanted to make you understand coding I just wanted to introduce you all the Go language because many DevOps engineers are lacking in the Go language you all can use the coding uh, coding uh, from here and you see we have done many many projects here right so I have kept everything A EFK AKS uh, Argo CD, AKS Terraform, Go language, and we'll be doing Go language part two also. And obviously, one more important thing, if anyone is looking to join the Prime Batch 7.0, Prime Batch 7.0 is running successfully now, like we have started, uh, like registrations are open now, you can come here, you can visit the course section, you can enroll yourself, make sure that you are understanding all the things, like when we are starting April 13, two plus months of course, so duration, uh, class timings are weekends, 9am to 12pm, doubts clearing session every Wednesday, and yes, obviously we are covering 14 plus real-time projects, and this time we are focusing on Azure as well as Kubernetes in depth. Now, what we are trying to cover here in Kubernetes is Kubernetes basics to your real-time concept like custom resource definitions, operators, security, uh, and majorly we are trying to make sure that you are understanding Helm charts, RBACs, Grafana, Prometheus, Istio, Kiali, Jager monitoring in Kubernetes, EKS, three-tier architecture deployment on Kubernetes, Java Spring Boot application, Terraform, uh, whatever, Docker, everything like Python, shell scripting, Red Hat Linux system administration, whatever is needed for you to get a job in DevOps. Along with that, we are also giving resume templates, mock interviews, interview questions, and each project roles and responsibilities. Whatever we have done, we will be giving responsibilities and projects to you so that you keep those things in your resume, right? This is applicable for freshers and experienced people and domain change people. So if you are looking for something to get into uh, tech domain, then this is one stop solution for you. This I'm not saying you can check out the state placement stories here. And also we have integrated DevOps labs onto, onto our platform. So you can do the coding with me. So if you see here, Python, I can, I can just type code here. So here also you can see like import. If I say some module, right? Uh, import, uh, let's say like a request module. Okay. So this, these things I can do here. Okay. Now I can say like request dot get. Okay. Right. So these kind of things where we can do the coding in our class. So if you are excited, do join. All the links are in the description. And that's it for today's video. Right. So wait for part two uh, on the Golang. We will be integrating all the tools with the Golang project and we'll be deploying. So if you like the video, like the video and share the channel link with your friends and join the Telegram group. So this is Singham signing off from this video. Bye.